What is happening, everybody? I hope you've had a good time. You know, back in like 2005, something like that. I think my first podcast is Friday, Junior. It's Friday, Junior. It's podcast day. It's made it. And did you come out? Do it a lot. Like, doesn't matter how you feel about the situation. My name is Rap. You're always always out of the podcast because we just want to talk about it. We'll talk about yeah. music, we'll share those stories and experience. This is my co-host, Carl, aka the Best weird track. buddy. He is hailing you from this sort of weird era where they're sort of right in that post-grunge. Like, I admit, your fight is a good fight in today's world. Uh, my war was fought 40 years ago, really. We are the two dudes who talk music, and we are here. Hey, I'm too, I'm too quick on that air horn button, oh, mate. How you doing? Man, yeah, that is amazing. I love it. You're second of a dude. Fantastic. How you doing all you amazing people? I am the Reverend Raf. This here is my, well, this here is my good friend, the beer buddy, Kyle. She We're is. the two dudes who talk music. We are here today with another podcast episode for you. That's right. It is Thursday, Friday, Junior. It is our favorite day of the week because it is podcast day. Woo. How you doing, oh, my man? It. Man, so keen. So keen to have these guests on tonight. You know, like, it's it's amazing because I was actually thinking about this today before we've done the podcast and it's like... We've been talking to these lot for a little while and just mm-hmm. to watch their progression, you know, they sort of start, like they haven't started where we started. We we talk to them in our start. Mm, yeah. And to watch them grow as musicians and accomplish what they've accomplished in the space, in the time and space of in what we've accomplished, it's just been amazing. You know, they've, they've just done what they did touring, touring Europe and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And dude, how, like that? this is what we're here for. Like this is literally what we're here for. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's what we're here for. You know, we love catching up with people, especially when, you know, we've had them on before and then they've gone and done something cool. Oh yeah. And then we get them back and talk all about the cool stuff they've done. That's what we love. Like if you've been on the podcast before and you know, it's been a little, little bit and you've gone and done some cool shit and you want to come on and brag about it, please. Our inbox is open, two dudes talk music at gmail.com. Shoot us an email. We'll have you back on. We love that. We love come on the show and brag about the cool shit you've done, please. We love hearing about it. Mm. Because that's the thing. I mean, you know, we talk about it all the time. You know, we we never want like you never want to speak to the people when they've made it. You know what I mean? Like, of course we do, but you know what I mean? It's so much cooler when you speak to them when they're in their grassroots and then they actually accomplish something really, really cool. You're not speaking to them after the fact. Yeah. We get to watch them grow. Yeah, that's it, you know, and, and that's one of, the, one of the cool things about, like I say, yeah, what, what we've been doing here and bands that we've spoken to early on and watching them grow and develop as well, seeing some of these bands that are, you know, with, with you know, the next generation of people coming up um, is, you know, it's so exciting and uh, not that these particular bands are like next generation, if you know what I mean, though, like, but... but yeah, but yeah, seeing seeing bands have these accomplishments and then uh, knowing that you know we, it's, it's look. The short version is we love cheering on our mates. Pretty we much. love cheering on our mates, and you know that's what you should do. Like it's it's great to see you know Aussie bands getting out there and, and showing the world what we're all about. Uh, so if you don't know what we're talking about, if you're sitting here going what the fuck hell are these guys talking about we have with us today returning to the podcast fresh well not quite fresh but you know fresh enough fresh enough back off a european tour that's right they went over they did the uk they did europe they went all over that bitch and they left a trail of empty tinnies in their wake we have uh, Pissed and Fist and Sin Soto that are back back in Australia now and we're going to get all the goss, we're going to get all the cool tour stories, we're going to get all hear all about it and we're going to get to that right now. Wonderful to see you, friends. Wonderful to see you. Thank you so much for taking your time to speak to us today. We very, very much appreciate that. How was the tour? Amazing. Good. <laughs> it was sick. It was absolutely yeah. sick. It was everything. It was everything. And more. Man, I can't. I, like we. 
if anyone could have represented the rest of Australia, I think oh, I think I would have wanted it to have been you lot. You know what I mean? It was just such a big thing after the after the metal after the um new metal mayhem show and stuff like that. And it's just it's it's so awesome that you got kicked ass over there because we saw we saw the Instagram posts, we saw we saw some of the Facebook posts and stuff like that. It looks like everyone was really receptive. It was real yeah. receptive, and um, I don't know what we expected, really. I think um, there was a, quite a few of us in our group that had never been uh, uh, into Europe and, and the likes, and, and uh, yeah, everything was new. You're sort of hitting it with, like, the food, the smells, the culture, the, the language. Like, it's, it's a – you're in, um, you know, overdrive, like, yeah, all the sensations are going. So, um, and it was nice to, um, yeah, you're sort of representing, aren't you? You, you feel that when you're o- on the road, you feel like you're representing your country and your home. And, and uh, yeah, it was awesome. Like, really can't. Yeah. Yeah, really awesome. Well, especially since it was a group of years. I mean, yeah. It's just, yeah. It's- yeah, we were a big, big Brisbane crew. So exactly, exactly. It was a, it was a big old moving train of Brisbane. I that made remember. it for me. That made it for me, I think. Um, it was sort of like a school camp if you if you go back a few decades. You know when you're on a bus and you're with your mates and you're just running amok and except no one telling you to pull your head in except maybe Papa Jeff every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, call me Dad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> Jeff had to be the, uh, the, the teacher of the... Of most the trip, of did the he? time, most of the time. Sometimes <laughs> he, sometimes he got to to um, got play the with the kids too. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, that's a, that's a problem. If Jeff Rose goes sit there, going, "Oh man, I've got to be the voice of reason to this. What the fuck is going on here?" Yeah, yeah. yeah we're in a, we're in a bit of strife, but yeah, it was good. Um, it was funny because I kind of, you know, I looked at Lex one day and I went, I, I kind of hoped that she was that person and I think it was something along the lines of drink piss you big sook or some shit like that and I went, oh, fuck. So there's no, <laughs> like, oh, oh, here we go, it's on. And it was on. It was it was so dope. Uh, wow. It's crazy. So it was it was like it was 24 shows, was it, across uh, the UK and Europe? Yep, around about that. About that. <laughs> yes. And not just that, some, yes, some of you guys were playing doubles in that, weren't you? Triples. Yeah, triples, yeah. 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 I did triples. But there was, he was a yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, That's crazy. All guitarists are in it, aren't they? That's crazy. So, because it was, it was, it was Sin Soto, Piston Fist, Chaosis, and then kind of like a super group doing uh, like Slipknot yeah, stuff, essentially. Is that what it, that what it kind of amounted and to for the prodigy, most part? We, and the we, Prodigy yeah. cover. Yes, of course. Tribute as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so if you call it a tribute. Like if you call it a tribute, it was debatable. definitely, found, it was definitely a show. I yeah. found <laughs> some, um, I found some footage on my phone. And it's uh, Cherv standing outside the venue in Warsaw, and he's just got his shirt in his hand, and he's wringing it, and it's literally as if you've dunked it in a bucket of water. It's just like, oh, oh, wow. wow. Disgusting. And that was on the regular. And I can't tell you enough, like, how pleased we were when we'd hit those laundromats after a few days <laughs> of um, everybody's uh, – you know, show gear yep. in bags. You're like, that oh. is bad. Oh, you know? oh, was oh, such a thing. It was mm. bad. You just be I like, take my clothes off me now. Oh. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was bad because um, it was obviously summer over there, and um, it was an up and down sort of. When we started in London, we were sort of in shorts and shirt, and within a week we were back in jackets. But as we got down to Eastern Europe, it was, I think, down in Romania, it was about forty-two degrees, so it was. <laughs> Very hot, um, yeah. and Crazy just hot doing those day. shows, you were you were a bit concerned for everyone's yeah. like heat stroke welfare, you know. But and a lot of that's not a lot of those those countries over there, like they've built all their infrastructure and their housing around staying warm in winter, so no they're not designed for flow. summer. So there's not not a lot of airflow, not a lot of circulation. No. <laughs> They don't, Everything's you know, stuffy. There's like, no air, no air conditioners a lot of the time as well. Yeah. Like, there's what, usually what's like actual a dry heat like. 
What's an actual dry heat like as opposed to a, like a 42 degree and 99% humidity? Well, I grew up out west, so we do get the 40s and dry. Um, mm. it's, hard, it's hard if you're out in it. Um, and it can it knock you if you haven't had enough fluids, you know, so... Um, no chance of not enough fluids. We, we had enough fluids. Yeah, the wrong type yeah. of fluid. Wrong type yeah. of fluid, mate. Thirsty after we drank so much. Yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> So yeah. did y'all get into all of the uh, all, all of the like the local beers and stuff like that? Absolutely, yes, <laughs> the best. I, I've yes, come sir. back. I must have said six or seven times how shits Australian beer. You know, and <laughs> don't you dare! You know, uh, I'll do it. I'm, no, I'm, Kyle. I'm a, like I'm, I'm a, my background's bricklaying. Like I'm a, I'm a bricklayer, forex, <laughs> and you've been you know, spoiled now. Yeah, but you, yeah, yeah. So you, 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 the first words out of your mouth after that were forex. Your judgment is not very clear, my son. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, like it was, it was Aussie beer. You know, yeah. 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 VB, whatever it was, like it just doesn't come close. It's, it's as simple as that. Yeah, yeah, yeah fair oh, enough. Shit. But let yeah. me enough. let me warn you. Good. Let me warn you, they're, uh, watch them when they offer you their... Um, Cherry vodka, baby. Their, their <laughs> spirits, <laughs> their, their uh, self-brewed, self, oh, man. self-constructed... Poison. Uh, poison. Poison. <laughs> <laughs> that you have you, to drink or you Did you ever try the snake? Did anyone try the snake venom while they were over there? No, no, didn't have a crack no. of snake venom. No, thank Nobody had Christ. A, we Nobody had a crack of the seventy, the seventy percent beer. Uh, no, we, no, we had a but we had a crack at this Duval. stuff in Czech. Call I forget what it was called, but it was like Something a along plum. The lines of ceviche. Yeah, it was like a yeah. plum liqueur, oh. and the dude put the bottle on the shelf, and it was like fifty-seven and a half percent. Oh, and, and I pointed that out to him, and he just laughed at me and was like, oh, "It's way more than that." Oh no. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Not even close. And we hitting those one fifty one ranges. That stuff was poison. Yeah, it's but it's like holy. It was quite amazing because as soon as people had it, all this truth would just pour out of them. It was like <laughs> it was like crazy truth serum, and I ended up in all these deep and meaningfuls with all these local people telling me really deep secrets or, or stories of their life. I'm like. What is in that shit? Because they just had a <laughs> shot of this, and then they just pour their heart out. So, and they said it's it's quite normal for them to drink it. I guess when it's cold, it would warm you up from the toes to the neck really fast. But yeah, it it was something else. Let, that stuff. let me guess on a on a forty degree day. Next thing you know, you're telling me that you killed someone and you buried him in the backyard. Yeah, yeah. You'd have to watch it with that. I don't know. I don't know what was in it, but I just noticed that everyone became hyper truthful as soon as I they try had it. Oh, mate. Well. You want to um? You want to make sure that you got uh. The, Good supervision around you. I think we <laughs> that night we all da- or a group of us danced home at about five in the morning from that show. We we yeah. we we saw it till the sunrise. So wow, I can attribute it to the and that was that was the show. That was the show. That was the, the tour. one. Yeah, like, it was, which show was so? Which show was that? Where was Epic. that at? Give Check us a bit out. more detail. So check it out. Jablonkov, I think, was the name Rock. of the city. Jablonkov, and um. <laughs> Something rock. It sounds made rock, up. Yeah. South, South Rock. South, <laughs> South Rock. <laughs> South Rock. Yeah. Rock Cafe. South Rock. It was, dude, it was, it was, was the, right. the place was built by him and his dad. It was um, We built. We rolled up not thinking much. We were like, oh, great. It's got like yeah. a, a running river out the back and – and it's so, called Rock Cafe, you know. You know, thinking. Yeah, we. I don't think we we expected nothing, and uh, we saw that there was a barbecue at the side, and we're like, "Oh, great!" Because it is um, fairly normal practice for a lot of venues over there to feed you. Okay. But we walked. Ooh. We walked into this. Uh, they feed the bands, and um, some will accommodate the bands as well, but. We walked into this venue and everybody's jaw hit the ground. Never have I ever stepped into a venue and felt like that. It was probably, hands down, the coolest venue I think I'd ever walked into because it was yeah. so unexpected. Yeah. The moment you walk through the doors, everything was so artisan. It had been handmade, hand, handcrafted and so considered, you know. Um, there was it, it was like walking into the ultimate Man cave, it's like essentially. a Viking rock and roll venue. Yes. Oh wow! Like, 
there were these giant like stone <laughs> faces you. on either side of the stage. And the eyes, were, the Massive. eyes were like they were like the Easter Island um, and statues. Then, like the nostrils oh. had smoke machines in them. <laughs> it was insane. <laughs> and then, oh uh, my god! Underneath yeah. the stage, they had so many subs that when Ryan was hitting his kick in sound check, I remember our pedal boards were like vibrating off the front of the stage. They're about to fall off, so we had to oh, get shots. We had to get mats to put the pedal boards on them so they wouldn't fall off the front wow. of the stage because of the subs under the stage. In it was the, the um, abominable. The there was like the a board. mezzanine level up the top, and it was all. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen people that do the sculptures with motorcycle parts. It'd be like a sort of like a blacksmith trade. Like mm-hmm. everything was done in that form, you know. Like it's amazing. It was- it's amazing what you can do when your venues aren't regulated to shit. Yeah, you'd never get away with it here. And there like, are two, yeah. two green rooms and then there was like the a shower and a bathroom and a jacuzzi. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Which, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that 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 living live that rock star yeah. life. Yeah. It was something else. <laughs> Insane. It was like an episode of Entourage. And the food, Absolutely. The, the food was amazing. You know, yeah. like you walk in the, the back room and it's full of all the different, you know, 10 different types of salami and and cheese and fruit and drinks and Ooh, we just felt like we were sort of the, the the red carpet had been rolled out you know anything you yeah. wanted was was given immediately it was it was um hands down the best night um of the tour for me anyway but <laughs> absolutely yeah. and the but like it's it's a place where i was going to say if when we go back yeah, it's, that's it's, what I want to hear, Jeff. Yeah, but it's it's a must go to venue now. Like no matter yeah. what, yeah. we'll work very hard to to head that way. It's it's you know like we'll revolve a tour around that place. Yeah, totally. That's, that's how cool that place is. Name the tour the after it and yeah. finish it there, yeah, so everyone yeah. can know just conjugate oh, one place. You no, wanna, no, no sleep get, till Jablunkov. Yeah, <laughs> get spare kidneys if you're gonna if like if that's gonna be the last. Venue, that's like a two-day bender. The, the <laughs> that's all right. I'm sure oh, you never know. It's, if it's one of those, it's Eastern Europe, did you say? Yeah, yeah. Czechia. Yeah. I'm sure you'd be able to find a kidney on the cheap there. Yeah, fair <laughs> point. Fair point. <laughs> yeah, it was um, Yeah, it was something else. But um, they had, the owner was telling us that uh, um, it was pretty serendipitous that we arrived and they had a two- people who worked there who were having party uh, birthday parties that night. So the, it was an extra vibe, oh, wow. a great, great vibe. It was um, pumping. It was <sighs> pumping. Everyone had had a lot to drink. But um, the owner was telling me that in the early inception of the band, Ginger, they had played there. That's the pretty band. cool. Wow. So, Quite so, a bit, yeah. But, um, yeah, definitely have never walked into a venue like it. And pro- so probably 10 out of 10, it. incredible. Yeah. Did, I have a question. Did anyone do a shoey since it was someone's birthday? No. Negative. I don't think there was one shoey. There, there was no shoey. There was no way. No one, no one <sighs> even asked you to no. do a shoey. No. No. There was an there was unbelievable no way I was amount anything. of Jaeger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was no way any of us were drinking anything out of any one of our shoes yeah, after yeah. <laughs> two <laughs> weeks of that disgustingness. Probably, probably Very fair. Fresh, yeah. fresh I'll, one. T- <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story, though. Um, this older bearded man came up to me during the night or early in the night and, um, an older guy. And he said, um, he, he handed me this little, uh, rock and I was, he's like, oh, your friend said you'd, you'd, um, appreciate this. And I was like, oh, he must be talking to someone that, cause I do, I collect rocks, like river stones and stuff like, oh, um, nice. we, like just when I go places, I grab a little rock and I was like, Oh, that's really cool. And um, hours later I saw him. I'm like, so what's the story with the thing that you gave me, you know? And he, it was hash. <laughs> it was a block of hash. <laughs> I had no idea. I would have taken that shit through customs and been like. Oh, no. It's a river, it's a river rock because of the shape of it. I, I couldn't quite tell. It was so hard. And I was just like, fuck, I would have got really done over oh, it. That is a big no. Bo- that is a. Oh, yeah. okay, so how, oh my God. How, wow. How, how fucked up did you get afterwards? Well. 
I did, I did dance home one. at 5 a.m. <laughs> yeah, so, so it was good shit then is what we're, what you're saying. Hey, <laughs> yeah. man, when, when he wrote, it was like, oh, this, I made good. this. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's a crazy thing. I mean, they, like, what a, it's all right around the corner, that stuff, when you're yeah. in Europe, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, you know, like. Well, we did do the Amsterdam, and, and but there are surprisingly uh, places that you go that are completely – uh it's not. not their not their thing yeah. um and uh yeah and that's why the guy came up and gave it to us because he was in a band and they played his music later on it was actually really great it was really heavy and really great an older guy and um yeah it, he said i know when bands are on tour how hard it is if they if they like to have a smoke how hard it can be to come by. So I always turn up to the shows and make sure the bands are looked after. And um, I don't smoke typically, but uh, yeah. That night you I, did. Oh, well, I don't know what I did that night. It was it was pretty <laughs> loose. After everyone did a shot of that 57% stuff, it, it got pretty pretty loose. But um, A shot. A shot, A yeah. shot, singular, <laughs> nah. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's the one they remember. Oh, See, yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm just imagining now, like, you know, the old, um, like the Beavis and Butthead style, like trip animation Basically, kind of stuff. I'm imagining yeah. like you're down a couple of shots of that stuff, and then it's yeah. just that, and then scene missing, and then waking up the next morning, and. Uh, well, I, I was three in and said absolutely hard no to <laughs> any more. And then when we were leaving, the the owner's like, oh, we'll have another shot of that shit. And then we all did another one, and that fourth one rocked me. I just, oh, the f- just stumbling it's, it's back always, to the accommodation. Yeah. I remember oh getting God. back to the accommodation, um, which was just like an Airbnb, like a private home. Um, and we walked back, a few of us. A few of us had already peeled out a bit earlier, but... I was so hungry at 5 a.m. and it was uh, the the sun wasn't quite up. I got into the van. I crawled into the van and I knew that some people had snacks in the van. And I found a half <laughs> half a, a <laughs> half a loaf of bread and a jar of peanut butter. So I just sat there and I must have been in there for about 15 minutes, just scoffing peanut butter and and bread. <laughs> And then, uh, then I went off to, to bed and the next morning we came to lay out <laughs> and Kyle was like, why is there all this peanut butter all over my chair? You know, like I had just sat in there, <laughs> just uh, made a pig of myself. But- all I can see is the little kid in his diaper covered in peanut butter. Oh, oh, like it was, a, yeah, yeah. It was it like, was just like, yeah. like a gremlin. Like, really long so, dreads. So you yeah. just you just turned into like you turned into a gremlin, basically, is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, pretty like, well. Five a.m. You're sitting in the van. I can imagine someone's like walking past and they're like, "Is someone robbing that van?" And they like knock on the window and shine a light in, and you're just like, <laughs> <laughs> like half a ba- mouthful of like. Fucking no! Yeah, it's those damn, it's those damn crazy river rocks that the locals get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta watch. Yeah. You gotta watch. <laughs> and then they tell. Then river. someone's telling. You know, someone's telling the story about how like they, they swear they were out on their morning walk and they saw like you know a river spirit in the van. I don't know, whatever, like some crazy shit. Yeah. Uh, it was, it love. was, it was a mess. But you always, <laughs> I always have that thought. Um, try and eat something if you've had a big night, like get some food in there before you lie down. Yes. And that was my so. thought. So it, um, apologies to whoever owned that half a loaf of – I think it was Ryan. I think I ate his bread and, and someone else's peanut butter. I didn't care. I would have eaten whatever <laughs> was in there pretty well at that point. So. Oh, wow. So I want to actually awesome. go – I want to go a little earlier in the tour because you guys hit a bunch of places around um, around the UK – to kind of kick things off. Yeah. Yep. Um, how, like, how did you find that? Did you guys do any? I know that, like, a lot of the, these dates are really tight. So I know you guys didn't have a ton of time for, like, sightseeing and everything like that. But did you, you know, how was that run through the UK? Um, I know we we tried to, funny story, we actually interviewed um, the guys from Dead Wax, like, the week before I think you guys were playing at Leeds and that's where they're from. We're like, oh, yeah, yeah, our mates are playing in Le- at this place in Leeds. Y'all should go down and check them out. No idea if they actually came down or not. Um, but, like, yeah, was that um, 
like section through the UK, was that sort of a a bit more rigid than some of the rest of it? Like, or was everyone just like really excited because those were the first few shows on the tour? Well, like, Jeffrey was drumming and yeah. singing. It was all of those things. It was exciting because it yeah. was the start and then the shows were like really up and down, I'd have to say, because some of them were like Sundays Ooh, and, yeah. you know, like Sundays in summer <laughs> in the UK. And then, you know, we played in uh, like Wales in Swansea and that was like an absolute, Fucking rage. that was number two. That was just that was like, number two next boom, to Jack. Massive yeah. show. It was yeah, awesome. Swansea was amazing fun. Some bloke fell downstairs. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> some he bloke. was that drunk. Yeah. Man, some, bloke. some bloke. Some I bloke. was saying you were Don't drumming know. and you were singing, Who? and I did see a video of you drumming and singing. What the fuck was going on there? When um, I saw that, I was just like, man, is there anything this guy can't do? Probably be able to give you a tattoo at the same time while he's kicking around the drums as well and screaming down the mic. That'd be a very shit tattoo. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, Ryan couldn't get there for the first few dates. Um, rock and roll, make it happen. Easy as that. Show must go on, all that sort of stuff. I right. I definitely didn't enjoy it as much as not playing the drums. I have much more of a fun time when I'm not sitting on a seat. But... um. Yeah, it was it was cool. It was an experience. Why do it again if I can help it? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he smashed it. He smashed it. He really yeah. did. And I remember looking over the balcony that night in Wales and going, <laughs> Jeffrey fell down the stairs. <laughs> oh, Jeffrey all, fell down the stairs. Yeah. And all I could see is your little legs like a turtle on his back with his <laughs> with his luggage and like Almost unable to get up for a few a uh, few seconds, you know. I was just like Too busy oh. giggling. Yeah. Well, did, did gravity make you your bitch in that case? Or absolutely, the the man that the the crew at Wales they were they were not far off the guys from Czech. They just here's another shot, here's another beer, here's another beer, here's another shot, have another shot, Food. drink another beer, and it was they just... were they were just louder, like aggressively louder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like, like just as nice, but they were very you know, like, mounted after face. Wales. So, well, where was, okay, so where, obviously in the UK there's, you know, a, a bit more, I imagine English was a bit more prevalent when you were around, going around the UK, but like, you know, Welsh is a pretty hectic language at the best of times um, and I, the Welsh accent can be pretty hardcore, it, but I can't imagine once they've got some... Uh, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of drink in them. How much it gets thicker? It's a bit like the Scots, like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, where, like a, Australians, I was going to say, the drunker the Aussies got and the, the drunker the Welsh got, the more it just made sense. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we <laughs> made kind of of their energy. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They loved us, and that was the, that that show. That was epic. That was definitely the show of the UK, no doubt. And it was because of the people that were there. You know, it wasn't wasn't a cracking venue or anything like that, but it was just it was just fun from start to finish right. as soon as we yeah. walked into the place, you know. That's um, another venue if we do the UK, like we, we will not not do hippos at Swansea. That that place rock. Yeah. I, w- I was upstairs, um they had like a green room upstairs and we were sort of getting ready and one of the fellas from the bar downstairs like, Oh, you found everything okay? He said they go up those next flight of stairs. They used to keep bodies up there. And I was just like, ha ha, that's probably what they say to keep bands from going up there. But uh, no, that was the truth. Because <laughs> I, met, I met the owner later and they're like, oh, yeah, when they had a plague or something or other, they used to put uh, overflow from the morgue up into that ceiling. And I was just like, everywhere you go in the UK, you're like, you know, it's uh, probably been a, a mass harborage for some some dead people at some point. Well, you're you like, know, like, if I mean, look, I'm sorry, but if someone tells me that, I'm like, I definitely need to need to go up there now. Like, I definitely yeah, need to go yeah, up there. Yeah, yeah, it sort of piques your interest a bit. <laughs> nah. Give me uh, a spirit yeah. box now. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I'm going to speak to the dead. Did, so, like, I'm I've obviously, but that's, I mean, this that's what it's about, right? Like, you go and any gig, whether it's here, whether it's local or abroad, whatever you're doing, like, the whole point is to have that connection with people and to just celebrate life together with up some music the and and yeah. the, the people that are coming out for a good time like that. Um, and, I mean, yeah, it, it sounds like and looks like from all the photos, like the people showed up and showed out and, and really had a good time with you guys and, uh, like, 
stoked, like super stoked, you know, like we were saying in the intro, like we love it. We love seeing our friends succeed. We love seeing our friends do well. And, you know, it's, it's just a great thing, sign all around, a great thing all around for Aussie music anytime mm. an Aussie band gets to go over and do something like that and have, you know, a successful tour like that because, you know, all of those people now are like that much more in love with Australian music. Well, you know, it might go prompt them to go check out another Aussie band. Yeah. Yeah, that'd yeah. be sick. And you know? I, feel, I feel like when we were neck deep in the organisation of this, uh, there was a lot of uncertainty around what to expect and, and how it was going to play out. Um, we definitely didn't get it all correct. I don't think you can when you're sort of diving into the unknown mm -hmm. and, and not really having the full story at your fingertips or necessarily the right resources to plug into to get the right feedback to know what to do and what not to do. Um, if there's ever any Australian local bands who want to pursue something similar, please come talk to us because I'll save you a lot of money. Um, <laughs> there's a few things on the onset that we realised that we did do, we didn't do. Um, but one thing that was truly magnificent was um, how we combined all our skills. Uh, everybody seemed to have in a crew of 11, all the Australians, uh, and we had CJ in Paris and our sound guy, Matty Cutlers. Between everybody's skills, the skill set that we had to navigate what we were dealing with, um, sometimes not easy scenarios, yeah. um, was fucking amazing. Like everybody had strengths where others didn't and vice versa. And we were able to roll like a really tight unit. I think the harder things got in some parts, the the better we got along. And yeah. there would be some words of advice that I would provide to um, other local bands who want to do it. It's definitely doable. Um, there's definitely things I would share, connections I would share to try and make it easier. Um, because if you don't know what you're going at, you sort of have to throw everything. Next time we go, we could do it more affordably, more efficiently, yeah. definitely um, do some things differently. And um, But uh, it's it's doable. And that was the whole – it was just a, an, an experiment, really. Can it be done? That's yep. it. That's it. So I and, love and, hearing that attitude of next time we go over there. Yeah, oh, it has, it has to be because hundred percent. You guys have got a reputation over there now. Yeah, well, yeah. even if we don't, I think you just you just keep showing up, and I think um, it was uh, much a case of being able to. I don't think any of us came home not in the red, personally and collectively. Everybody came home fucking broke and and exhausted. But I think um, if you're willing to work with groups collectively and combining resources, it's definitely doable and doable again. And we sort of made it our mission to, while we were traveling around, to uh, shake hands with everybody and meet everybody, particularly uh, people who worked at the venues and, and to make those connections so that we can, um, you know, organize things in future Again, uh, establishment to band, you know, um, if you're going to organise to do a similar type of tour. But, um, yeah, I don't think you could learn what we learnt unless you just jump in. Mm. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I've actually had um, the boys from Flaming Wreckage um, from Sydney message me a little while ago. They were going over there. They dropped a date and I um, put them on to hell and they, they, got, a, they got a gig at, at oh, hell. Yeah. Yeah, nice. yeah, like, yeah. Good on you, man. Super stoked, you we know, love the boys from Flaming Wreckage. Like, yeah, we're, absolutely. We're, guys are legends. And this yeah. is this is As what it's band, about, though. It's like amazing. sharing. It's like yeah. sharing sharing those contacts, sharing that information because, you know, we go through so much stuff in – like people get this idea that, you know, we've got to, we've got to protect my contacts and protect my everything because if someone no. else has my contacts, then they don't need me and then I'm not relevant and it takes my opportunities away. It's like, no, no, this is like you, you, you need really to support to each other and help each other. 
you really have to ask yourself, what do you want out of it? Mm. Like, what is the point of this? And I think uh, you spend a couple of hours a day doing a show and the rest of the day you just spend with your fellow bandmates. Um, to me, that was the thing that made this trip for me was spending it with other fellow Aussies. It, 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 we're all very different. We all have different jobs, different lives. We probably, um, some of us knew each other fairly well, some at surface level. And I just, it became a family and Absolutely. Uh, over that time. And um, yeah, that to me, I will take away even more than the shows because I think I understand that if a band becomes big and they have more opportunities, you'd want to take your mates on the road a hundred fucking percent. Yeah. If you if you've got to do long stints like that, and ours was a a long stint. Six weeks is a long time. We were over there yeah. two months, but yeah, you you want your mates alongside mm. you because things aren't always going to be rosy, and when they are rosy, it's awesome to have your mates with you. So. Yeah, that was the number one takeaway from me. Be very selective about who you choose to travel with um, mm. to do these kind of overseas yeah. um, adventures. Make sure you're tight with them. Make sure you can rely on them, and they're trustworthy. And everybody's willing to do a hundred percent equally. Because if it's yeah, not, what needs to be done? Everybody, yeah, needs whatever to needs get to be done. done. Yeah, because that'll yeah. make the experience for you. So what's That's bad? What um. What was, yeah? Let's okay. Let's get into some of the tea here, right? Let's get into some of the tea. We've done. Uh, I'm going to go. Warm I'm gonna f- go grab, keep going. Keep going. All right, we've be- done. We've done some warm and fuzzy stuff, right? Now I would like to to ask, what was the most challenging experience or the most challenging moment of of the tour, and how did you guys overcome? Said the border challenge? crossing. Border mm-hmm. crossings were. Yeah, Serious, but, yeah. The, the Romanian border crossing, the Romanian border crossing was, was the, the difficult was one. one. There was, uh, uh, thou shall not pass go, thou shall not collect $200. We end up split across the borders. There was an arrest made. Um, Whoa, okay. it, it got scary and hairy, and um, the Aussie bands had to navigate that. Um, yeah. and it was serious, it was. It was serious of having half your group uh, stuck on one side of the border Scary's in Hungary. The world. Yeah, it was scary. It was definitely yeah. scary, and uh, half stuck in the other country, and and having to try to, um, in real time, once you realise that you're in a new country, and it wasn't easy to get into in the first place. Suddenly, you realise that half your crew, you know, our sound guy and Paris and CJ, who'd rented a vehicle because of an error in the original planning of not having enough seats in the other van, Mm. Um, having to rent a vehicle and then having that vehicle detained at a border and turned around because it didn't have the right paperwork. Because in the UK, uh, in Europe, they have zone one, zone two. You can't rent a vehicle in Western Europe and take it into Eastern Europe without the right paperwork signed. And although that had been arranged, the paperwork hadn't. So Ooh. when they went to go through the, and there were gates, you know, uh, you know you're on a main road. Mm. And Romania has just opened its border, EU borders, as of May 2024. So when you go through this border, it's particularly punishing. It's still very locked tight. There's still people with weapons and their demeanor is no bullshit. They yell at you. They, they, they're not fucking around. And uh, mm. we saw those scream guys. At you. Yeah, they scream at you. It's it's oh, not wow. pleasant. Um, so they've opened border through uh, flights, but because, from our understanding, because Romania and Hungary share a border, there's probably underlying tension there. I'm not going to comment on it because I'm not from there, but. So they're particularly fierce coming in and particularly fierce coming out, going out. And um, so we have our sound guy and CJ in Paris in a vehicle beside us and they're going through one border box and we're in the lane beside them. And we can kind of see each other and we're sort of, 
I'm like, oh, we better not make too much contact to, to say that we're traveling together, you know. And after being yelled at a bit, they let us through. And um, so we pull up at a servo and, uh, on the other side and we're waiting. And then we get text messages saying we're being turned around, we're being detained. And then um, it was not good. It was scary. Wow. And uh, we had to sort of navigate that. Uh, and it resulted about six hours or so after. Yeah, it was <laughs> yeah. get it sorted. So. It resulted us in us uh, splitting the nine of us, so Piss and Fist and Sinsado, splitting in half. Half staying at the accommodation, half going back across the border. At, you know, close to midnight, and going and getting our the rest of our crew because we decided that we weren't going to play any more shows or go any further until we had everyone together. And if we couldn't get them over, then we were all coming out of Romania. So good. it was up near 10, 11 at night and we have to, we'd book. It was a rescue mission. That's, it was a that's, rescue That is what it was. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So we you went out. stuff CJ in a duffel bag and try and sneak him back over the border or some shit. We, we so went it, into the dead of night and we had booked CJ Paris and Matty Cutlass a motel because we knew their vehicle couldn't come any further because of the paperwork error from zone one to zone two. That that rental vehicle so like had Hunger Games shit. It was yeah, it yeah. was full on. It was full wow. on. That vehicle had been picked up in France, and because it didn't have enough paperwork and the right paperwork, and it was a weekend, I thought, well, we have to leave that vehicle in Hungary. So we booked a motel for those guys, just one room. So that their car had a motel to stay at safely. And then we went to get them. And um, so we got over there, there close to midnight and then we put them in our van and we brought them back over. And we almost didn't make it through, like mm. back through uh, because it looked dodgy. Because yeah. Of course it did. We back left and forth the country. And back and, yeah. yeah. You're like, you were fucking just here an hour ago. Like, Yeah. And the only thing that got us over that border is that before we left, I was just like, what am I going to need printed out in case my phone doesn't work or something? And I printed everything just as a safekeeping. And the last thing I printed, I didn't think of much of it, but I printed the tour poster, like of the bands and the tour dates, because there's not um, in language barrier, you know, when you're hitting mm. those border crossings. And the only thing that got us over was the tour poster. No shit. Yeah, yeah. It, it was handed over and they're like, oh, you're a band. And they kind of waved us through when they weren't going to let us through. So so after like six hours and all that dicking around, the tour poster yeah. saved your ass. Yeah, yeah, it was such yeah. a random thing. That's it. And then every other border crossing from that point, we had that tour poster was one of the first things that we handed yeah. the customs guys. And, dude, like we – we were one. I can't remember where it was. Maybe back from Bulgaria or something. When, when yeah, we did the river was, crossing, yeah, it was they over the ferry. Yeah, Man. you on YouTube. Yeah, that that guy was like, you know, he <laughs> was like, oh, rock boot. and roll, rock and roll, no problem. After like not being a nice dude, and then like his mate he brought in up their, your YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah, brought up a YouTube, and they're in there kind of half banging their heads and shit, going cool, <laughs> rock and roll. And it's like. You know, our anxiety, everybody in that van's anxiety is just through the roof, yeah. every border crossing. And here these guys are going, oh, it's rock and roll. And they're like, holy fuck, are you serious? <sighs> yeah. So, yeah. I don't know crazy. whether you'd be happy or have a heart attack right now. Are you going to shoot me or like, yeah, ah. that's just let me go. Just wow. let me get the fuck out. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. intense. That's Jeez. really intense. It was, Jeez. dude. It, so it, was, we, it was crazy. We really celebrated when we got back. To the accommodation at midnight and everyone's back together again. And then we're like, oh, fuck. We have three more shows in Romania and a trip uh, uh, over to Bulgaria. And now we are overloaded by two. Our van doesn't fit CJ in Paris and Maddie Cutler's. So, so missing a car. Because in we, we've left, had to leave a car in Hungary yeah. that can't come through. So yeah. we just, we have to go rent another, hire another vehicle and go through that process again. And this, started from the onset of everyone landing in London and the other van didn't have enough seats for everybody. So this is where it started. Fatal error. Uh, and the, the collateral damage from that not being executed properly from the onset was just a knock-on of um, misfortunate events that cost us yeah. a lot of money, really added a lot of stress, 
and we just had to deal with it. And yeah. and by dealing with it as a group, we uh, it made I, us a I tell you, unit. I I yeah, did some learning. <laughs> I would have been the stressiest motherfucker oh, if I'd been there for that. Like, like I mean, look, I when tensions arise was in the states and we had to get back to LAX. Like we were, and this this is just within the same country. Like we didn't have you know the border crossing issues and all of that, but like. Our flights out of LAX were like 10 o'clock at night, right? So we didn't want to go to LA the, night, the day before and stay there and then have to get out of our hotel at 10 a.m. and fart ass around all day with all of our luggage. We didn't want to do that. So we're like, right, we're staying in Utah. We got the, you know, there's the, the van, the person we're staying with has got the van. Like we'll just, they're just going to drive it. We'll get up in the morning early and we'll drive from from where we are in Utah to to LA. Like, yes, it's an all day drive, but it'll be fine. You know, whatever. About an, about 90 minutes past Las Vegas, the van breaks down. Oh no. <laughs> and, you know, this is, this is 2012. So there's no Uber. No Uber. There's no <laughs> like, you know, there's no Ubers or anything like that. There wasn't really taxi apps and that sort of shit. Right. So we're like, and we didn't even have smartphones because we hadn't got SIM cards. We just gone up. Well, we'd gone over there and bought like super cheap phones. But even then, it was like because we've been there for like 30, 35 days or something. We we're a bit over a month, so we'd only bought a month's worth of credit. So the phones were no good anyway. Oh, and shit. we, you know, got to a thing, and we ended up having to pay like five hundred dollars to get a taxi from this trucks this like truck stop servo to for these people to this for these car service people to come and pick us up and take us to LAX and we barely made the flight like and I was like stressing so much and I and I'd been huh? I'd been sick so I like hadn't had anything to eat or drink in like you know probably about 36 hours at that point like we got to the airport and like my eye had like burst a blood vessel so that was all like you know, just from the stress and dehydration of it all. Like I was, so that was in that situation, how bad I was. Yeah. Like I was, I would have been like, I probably would have been basically catatonic if I had to deal with what you guys dealt with. Like that just sounds like an absolute fucking nightmare. No one like, is saying nightmare that, Raph, but all I can see is Raph going like, you know, when um Sylvester gets scared. Yeah. They all the, the, yeah. He's all <laughs> stiff and twitchy and <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I do not do well when plans don't come go the way they're fucking supposed to. Like it's just and, and the reality of these kind of adventures, um, having traveled a lot in the my younger years, it's not a case of if, it's when. But when, yeah. You can lay the best plans out and, and take all the time to orchestrate perfect organization. Shit's still gonna go wrong. And I think your ability of how to uh, adjust to or, or learn to adapt on the fly is the absolute imperative in the situation. That being said, things like not having enough seats in cars is an absolute avoidable issue. And when things like that are, are done through poor orchestration, it sets a, a, a it sets a ball in motion. You you can't go country to country without enough seats in vans. It's just mm. not going to happen without you know, overbook issues. You seats. Yeah. If you have better, 11 people if you have eleven people coming on tour, yeah, you book for I 14. Mean, it, it was yeah. what it was, but it, it uh, there was collateral damage on this trip and unfortunately um, <coughs> we did have to pick up a bit of the slack there to sort it out. Um, as long as everyone comes home broke, you know, and that's the thing. It's if everyone no, it's it it sounds like I'm being a dick, but I'm not. Mm. It's one of those things is if everyone contributes oh, I and think, everyone yeah, puts you, in, yeah, no you're one correct. no one's worse off. And the generosity of everybody, because there were some in the group that had a little less available to them than what others did. And I think as a group, everybody dipped yeah, in wherever like we it was a family venture. Listen, we had. I'm, I'm gonna that. pop in here. She, no. She's being extremely nice, <laughs> but I, I give you the mail right now. If it wasn't for them two, it would have turned to absolute shit. Oh, no wow. doubt in my mind. Absolute. 
Lexi and Sherv pulled us out of holes, not once, not twice, constantly. They're absolute legends and they don't give themselves enough of a rap. No mm. doubt. We can what go back to our normal service. <laughs> I love you, Jeff. <laughs> round no, of applause, outright. round of applause. Yeah, absolutely. But mm. I think um, for me it is family. When you're under, going to undertake anything of that magnitude, where you're sort of on your own, we're not under any representation, we're not under mm. a label, we didn't have the booking agent's contact details. We were just ourselves trying yeah. to pull something off that we hadn't done before. And I know that everybody um, dug deep and everybody chipped in. We had um, a couple of birthdays uh, in <laughs> celebrations. We yeah. had no one like, remembers we, that, we they? make it a, a conscious effort every few days between living off sandwiches and the cheapest thing we could find. We would have these dinners where um, we would roll in and we'd go sit at a, a one of the local restaurants and try as much of the cuisine as we possibly could in the short time we were there. And they were some of the nicest memories I yeah. take back that you have 11 people around the table, we're sharing drinks, we're breaking bread, we're having conversations, we're skiing. Smoking cigarettes. <laughs> a lot of cigarettes. In restaurants. Yeah, yeah I, you can't do that not- over here. Mm-hmm. Mm. Or you could be like me and light up when you're not in a country. When you're not that... actually meant to, yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. Uh, that? England. Yeah. Actually, I've been in it. Japan <laughs> and everyone smokes inside in Japan and uh, we were engrossed <laughs> in a conversation and I had rolled a cigarette to go outside and Jeff says, are you smoking inside? Because <laughs> I had just forgotten just did what it. <laughs> Your hands just did it without thinking. You know? I was I honestly wasn't thinking and I just had to like put it out in my hand because I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I, I, I've just come from Japan, you're allowed Wrong to country, that. motherfucker. Yeah. 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 But they were some of the best nights because we were abs- we just eat ourselves and drink ourselves into stupor, like very indulgent, um, but awesome. Where we We'd sort of end up uh, scheming about how we didn't have to go home, how we could just go missing over here, and you know, and how we're going to do it again one day because mm. um, it was yeah, it was awesome in in uh, taking awesome. that time to make those things while you're just driving, stopping, setting up, playing, and and packing up and doing. We uh, taking that time to sort of have those family well, it's, it's a, dinners. It's, it was it's lovely. A- it's a time. It's a. It's a break from that. You know what I mean. Like when you're, especially in between shows. When you're doing that, like, it's as much as as fun and incredible of an experience as it is. You know, you're there to do a job and play those shows. So you can get into that kind of work mindset about it sometimes. And when you've got those days off in between, that you can take that take that time to just relax and be, you know, just and be friends instead of colleagues Working. for for a yeah. time you know and you can step you can turn that part of your brain off and w- like you say you guys have been you know scraping by on on sandwiches and and you know and all well, that the stuff sandwiches like and then, ten ten dollars a straight when you go yeah. and you grab, grab a sandwich and you do the conversion to euro or pounds you're like oh shit that's that's, that's yeah. quite a lot of money it's for a cheese yeah. sandwich you know so like, you do you do get into that but um but yeah, like to, to being able to have those moments is like that's that's where you know those those real bonds and connections form. Like you say, you know, like it's it's and as challenging as all the a lot of the experience is, it's what brings people together as well. Yeah, yeah it's absolutely it, the best. You do it again every day, of week, and we definitely collected slogans. While we were going oh. around, there were things that would just keep being said, and they you sort got the of van keys. Yeah, that that needs to be a shirt. <laughs> the inside jokes, yeah, damn night. it! Yeah. Yeah. Damn it, the, the inside jokes. Well, the inside joke is that we had one set of keys and eleven people, and usually we try and hand the keys off to the most sober, responsible person. But they did go around the group from time to time. And I'm absolutely amazed in six weeks. We never lost those keys. But you'd always be going around going, do you have the bear keys? Because you wouldn't yeah. remember who had initially got them at the beginning of the night. So um, 
Yeah, you were often just like, everyone's like, no, I gave them to you. And then I went and got something out and then no, no, but they got past. So it was always just a running joke of, have you got the big keys? It's <laughs> funny, we, we played last night um, at the tattoo convention and Maddie was our sound guy again. So it's the first time a lot of us saw Matt since. And um, Sherv hit Matt for the van keys and Maddie didn't even think twice. He just reached in his pockets and grabbed him his keys. <laughs> and then he you know, was just like, yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, so that's awesome. Awesome memory. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. So how was, how was Camden? Camden Town? Did you did you guys play Camden? Yeah, was that the yeah. First we, show? we played, uh, yeah, it was at that Iron Maiden bar. Yeah. Was it Cart great, and Horses. Yeah. yeah, Cart and Horses. That's right. That yeah. was a good show. It was fun. That was our first was. one, so there was nerves and things. It was definitely um, – Homeless dude tried to sell us salmon. Oh, yeah. That's right. In 30-degree heat. <laughs> yeah. He came, yeah. he came just, along the street with a with bag of hey, bro, salmon. Hey, bro, you got no idea. Anything that's goes like in Camden Town. I'm surprised yeah. that's all they got offered. Well, <laughs> look. I was surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, Camden was good. The venue was really, really rad. Um yeah, it was good. That was a that was a good one. It was a good um, icebreaker for the whole tour. Yeah, it would have been good. Nice, nice. Now look, I mean, we know obviously, you know, the UK and Europe. There's a there, there's uh, as 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 uh, in terms of populations, they've been around a, f- a fair bit longer than uh, a lot of that in Australia here. Like, I'm sure there's plenty of buildings over there that are older than Australia and as a country and all this kind of stuff. What did y'all? What was like? What was the the wildest place that you guys stayed in oh. over there, or the probably coolest like, place? What, probably like, like the coolest the, place. Yeah, what, yeah, one of the like bougie castle-y type ones. Well, maybe that was where we did the birthdays. Mm. Remember? Oh, that was the chateau. The, yeah, that, I mean, it was it, pretty bougie. Well, two Ooh, birthdays. We fancy did. Dan, the chateau. Yeah. It, it wasn't was like, fancy. I, it, Maybe I'd say that no, one let, in Romania. Let's talk about Jimmy's birthday. Well, oh, I, I can't comment on it because it's just blank to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I try to remember it and it's not there. It's just my brain is you, just... You, you got the smooth brain on that day. <laughs> <laughs> so we, right off. we stayed in Old... Very sensible. We stayed in Old Castle, but we didn't tell Jimmy. So we rolled in and uh, it all looked really... <laughs> Everyone, like, if I mention this, everyone's going to have their own type of flashback of what actually happened that <laughs> night. Okay. But we'd, we'd been to a supermarket and we went and got a bunch of, like, um, like charcuterie board kind of stuff, you know, like cheeses mm-hmm. and, and drinks. And we thought, oh, we'll have a picnic out in the grounds of this big old place. And, w- and uh, it was by coincidence that we ended up setting up our picnic area on the grass a w- out of sight of the castle thing that we were staying in. We're in the castle grounds. Yeah, we're on the grounds because the grounds yeah, were, were quite large. We were so when we turned up, I walked in quickly with the guys to, like, check in. I took a couple of steps inside and turned around and walked back out and went, I'm not meant to be here. This is <laughs> this is not a Jeff kind of place. Like, it was very nice. It very, was very nice. Fifteenth century, and it was the hunting lodge of King William or something in the Netherlands. So oh, it was, wow. it was well beyond all of us. So we went outside, as you do when you don't feel like you fit in. You just, I'm just going to put myself over in a corner somewhere. So we laid out a picnic blanket, pulled out all our drinks and um, food stuff, and we just sat around all, eleven of us and had drinks and food for Jimmy's birthday, and then. I don't know at what point it turned. There was definitely a moment that it just turned um, because we'd been to the supermarket and uh, all these foreign liqueurs and we had coffee liqueur and a few other different things floating around, big bottle of Jaeger. The next minute we have, we have a Bluetooth speaker hanging in a bush, full full whip, just oh yeah. as as and we're just shirts off. Dancing, yelling at each other. I at think the top it was. Of that. I think it was Cotton Eye Joe. And- <laughs> it was. Oh, no. It was absolutely. Herbo, that's that's it, how bad it was. About as like, maggot as everyone had been. 
I remember that some people had to be uh, chaperoned back to the to find their rooms. Yeah, that was and, dead. Oh, no. and we were hiding from security because we were out in the corner of their grounds. No one had seemed to notice that we were out there. So we. My theory, my theory is that security saw us, and the guy on the um, night was like, "I'm not getting nah, paid enough for that, that. shit." Yeah. Uh, I didn't see shit tonight. Nope. So no, that's, uh, that's what, it's okay. We're Australian, that. and that's a. Yes, yes, I understand. <laughs> they, they, mm. uh, I'm, I'm going to have to tell them, Jeffrey, because it was you got it. You it got was it. pretty funny. It's um, goals. Okay. So Jeffrey okay. needed help, and there was like a large cricket ground or sports field that we had to go back across to get to. So I sort of um, chaperoned Jeffrey back to his room because he was ready to go to bed. And I remember him saying, you're awesome, Lexi. Thanks so much for getting me home. <laughs> So I get him up to his room and off he goes and I walk back to the group. Throughout the night, Jeffrey had gotten up to use the bathroom and yeah. uh, he was in his underwear. And red underwear. Red it's underwear. very important yeah. that they're red. He, he, yeah. he, he went out. Instead of going through the bathroom door, he went back out into the hallway door and the door, sh the main door shut behind him. Oh, no. So yeah. he's, he's now... Stuck in the castle, in the hallway, in his jocks. Oh and, no! And needing to use the bathroom and can't get back into his room. I think needing he wanted... to use the bathroom badly, <laughs> quite I badly, have, mate. I would have found the first. So the, funny. Was there any armor was, there? I was doing laps <laughs> up and down the hall. I was, I was like, surely there's a toilet around here somewhere. So I kind of ran up, and then I was like, oh no, you're in your jocks. You can't <laughs> run down to the lobby or whatever, and then. I turned around and went, what fucking room was I in? <laughs> oh, God. oh, no. So, so I had a guess because Maddie was in, Maddie, me and Maddie shared a room, and Maddie, our guitarist. So I had a guess and I knocked hard on this one door and Ryan, our drummer, come out and just went, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and I went, I need to piss. <laughs> I just <laughs> ran in there past Ronnie and <laughs> went and pissed and then come back out and went, do you know what room I'm in? Oh, that post piss clarity. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Man. So me and Ryan see. just knocked on the door till Maddie actually got up and moved. And then oh, I had wow. a cracking story for the morning for everyone while we, wow. while we got into the van. That's oh. what I'm talking, hey, what's the point of going on tour if you're not going to oh, have absolutely. some Absolutely. Man, that, uh, that, that point, that point where I heard the door click behind me, like that was straight you suddenly up got, something. You suddenly got very, very sober when you heard oh, that, uh, right? It was it's something like... out of an American high school movie, <laughs> dead set, like there was some American pie shit going on. It, was no, it would have been that slow, would have been that Fuck slow off. click too. Yeah, with that, with that, with that arm, with that little thing slowly pulls yeah. in. Didn't just close. Had yeah. to really put an emphasis on it. Absolutely. Yeah, it was good. The door that, had to be dramatic. That was a winner. That was a that was a good night. Man, good see, oh, man, I'll I'll live for that shit. Like that. That's what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that is that is literally what you bust ass so much to do. Sorry, when you go yeah. on tour. It's I'm treating that shit like a holiday. Mm. Yeah, like, well, and it, you know what? On holiday, shit happens. Yeah, it was a it was a really hard working holiday. Mm. Yeah, that was that was super fun. But but dude, like, is it is it like? And that's the thing. It's like you get to do the thing that you love the most. Yeah, it's work, but you get to do the thing that you love yeah. the most. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. Very lucky. Very very appreciative. And and we went from greater. Accommodation and things to some really uh, precarious kind of stuff or as well. Like there was six in, flights. Yeah, six flights of stairs. Yeah, six. like yeah, um, six. Fuck that. Yeah. Six flights. Yeah. Sorry, With I'm, all the I'm, gear too. Sorry, all the gear, not um, just some of the gear. Because oh. you gear could never leave your steps. gear in the car. Oh no, you can't. You'd, you'd have to bring it with you. So oh, there was a couple of no. hostels there that no elevator, and it's two o'clock in the morning, you're just dragging everything up. And but um, in Bulgaria, uh, it was an outdoor festival, and uh, festival was great. <laughs> we got food. We got. We had a really great time. No and, PA system. Oh yeah, that that no that PA was, system. <laughs> Whoa. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matty Cutlass. Mm. Whoa, 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 whoa,
we turned up at this show in Bulgaria. It looked really rad, you know, um, the venue and stuff. It was an outdoor venue. And um, the other bands, that they were setting up and they didn't sort of turn up, didn't click on. And then we turned up and Maddie Cutlass, the sound guy, just went, where's your PA? They didn't have one. They, they had bits and pieces away in a storeroom that hadn't been used for a long time, but they thought we were bringing the PA. We weren't bringing the PA. So Matthew Cutlass just put on this wizard hat and kind of built one MacGyver pretty the, much. MacGyver the PA. Yeah. yeah, he did. And we played the show. Damn. It was a the wizard, show. absolute wizard, 100%. An he was man. absolutely worth um, every uh, investment in having yep. uh, a competent sound person that could navigate every type of different system yeah. in every different type of format and every different type of country. Like I would absolutely not, we wouldn't have been able to play some of the shows absolutely um, without him. So he's such a fucking goer, isn't he? Yeah. He's a goer. And the, he, he absolutely won the dance move competition by, yeah, he did. you know, dance yeah, move competition. Oh yeah. He's, he just, yeah. he wins it. Proper party boy, that boy. He's, yeah, he fixed things while he was munted. He was just amazing to watch. Engineers are built different, bro. And I'm so talking he, like audio. No, he, this guy sounds like an engineer. Engineer. Yeah, yeah, he absolutely is, man. And he took um, a wizard. He, he took a bunch of photos of both bands too while we're on while we're on tour. They were amazing. And he's not a photographer, and like, yeah, he's just one of I'd his say photos. He is just a got, photographer. Yeah, one of his photos just got published in a magazine, and like, oh, it's, serious? Yeah, he's he's just killer. The guy's on. What can't you do, Cutlass? He's the best. Well, looks at the That's day. Awesome. You, look, just goes to show. Look what happens if you give smart people opportunity. Yep. Yep. He doesn't like you. Don't give him anything. He'll take take the opportunity. He's that guy. Yeah. You know, he, he won't. He's that guy. For you throw, he's that guy you throw lemon at, lemons at. Yeah, lemonade all day, baby. Be. Yeah, Actually, no, he'll, he'll make the Jagermeister and... out of it. <laughs> Sorbet and ferment it and get you all mm. drunk and having a good time. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. our cutting. Yeah. That's mad. That's so yeah. good. Like, honestly, see, seeing the whole thing, it was, it was, I don't know, it was such like a prideful thing in, in a weird sense of way, even though like really like we weren't playing the shows or nothing, but it was just so mad to see. Yeah. You guys having such a big, good time. Big smiles on our face every time yeah. the posts yeah. had come up. We, like we've got a lot of feedback from people saying something similar, you know, so proud of you and well done and hard work pays off, all those things. So and it's, it's the kind of people care. And it's the kind of thing that, you know, bands see you do that and go, Oh fuck, you can do it. Yeah. Well, we didn't know at the time whether it could be done. Like no. we, knew, like you guys knew, we did have um, Anders Kolsefni as the headliner and um, Anders pulled out and as of March, we really had a choice to make. We'd all um, at that point already paid for some flights. So it was really just I remember the day sort of walking up and down the the house thinking, if we don't try to continue this, we won't do it yeah, because man, life but, just but. gets in the way. And we made a decision to kind of try and keep the ball rolling without a headliner. I don't want to um, sit here and pretend that it wasn't fucking hard work and costly and full of error and even a simple piece of information like in summer – in the UK and Europe, the sun does not go down until 10 or 11 p.m. at night. Now, oh, why, is that, that. why is uh, that relevant? Is because during that time of year, because I've lived over there, I knew that, but during that time, people, uh, time of year, people don't want to necessarily go to go indoor oh. shows. That's why the, fest, the fest, yeah, that, that's correct. So, uh, the feedback for us, even though some of our shows felt like we we're like, oh, that was a good turnout, they said, uh-uh. Yeah. We, oh, wow. We, uh, you need to come back in the cooler months when people actually uh, like to participate in indoor shows because you okay. will have three three times the, um, 
you know, three times the punters that you would otherwise. Like, it was a simple Had, Yeah, thing. hadn't even considered something like yeah. that being, in, yeah. being a factor. Well, that's and the thing. I mean, you go over there, everyone from the UK, like the last thing I want to do when summer hits in the UK is want to be in the UK. They go to places like Ibiza. That's otherwise, right. Because it's so cheap. It's so cheap to fly anywhere from the UK. But I can't tell you how weird it is to finish your gig at like nine o'clock at night, being one of the opening acts, and you go outside and the it's, sun's up. It's yeah. still like three o'clock in the afternoon. Time and time Crazy. again, it still weird weirded you out. So mm. the start of the tour, we missed so many dinners because <laughs> we were like, oh, maybe we'll go out and get something to eat. And then it was like eleven at night, night. midnight. Yeah, yeah. Because the That's sun had just uh, gone down, and we were like, "Oh, the sun's gone down. We should go get some dinner." Now, correct me <laughs> if I'm wrong. They they put when daylight savings hits in the UK, they put their clocks like we put our clocks like back one hour. They do theirs like three. So they try and Is like it? milk. Yeah, they they their daylight savings. I'm, I'm going to look this up. Just. Well, okay, while, while Kyle's fact looking that, that up, while, Kyle, while he's fact-checking that, i got a question that I need to ask you guys. Now, it's unrelated to the tour. It's unrelated to the tour, but it is something that we've been trying to cover off recently on the podcast um, to try and get some consensus uh, over the course of this, this year where we're get, trying to get a whole bunch of answers from people on this question and we're going to tally the results and s- come up with the answer at the end of the year. Now, obviously... <laughs> Oh, Whiskey is always the answer. <laughs> um, but no, so the, the question relates to, now, obviously, the big four of thrash metal, uh, Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer, and Anthrax. They're often widely considered to be the big four of thrash or Bay Area thrash, I suppose, if you want to get specific. But Kyle and I have been doing this little thing where we're trying to get a consensus on who the big four of the new metal era would be. Now, these aren't necessarily bands, you know, we're not necessarily meaning bands that we would specifically consider to be new metal today, but bands that really came to the fore during that new metal period. Um, early 2000s. That, like late 90s, early yeah, 2000s late, late period. Yeah, late 90s, early 2000s. Who, who would you consider to be the big four from that Period. I mean, it's it's got to be corn and three other people, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's corn and some other guys, but it's corn are in. There. I remember the definitely of people there. started listening to corn in our school. I was about 12, 13, and all of a sudden, everyone was wearing baggy pants with chains. Like it really yeah. happened overnight. And the other band I remember during that era was Linkin Park because everyone bleached their hair and got. Like yeah, I, I definitely had. I had some frosted tips. So. Yeah, I yeah, had some frosted tips back in the day too, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. corn. Limp biscuit have got to be close. Yeah, I'd I'd put limp biscuit in there probably. I'd, I'd put, even go. I'd, yeah, but no, no, we're going about the era. Like oh, yeah. Yeah. limp biscuit were. They were massive. Come on, they were. Limp I've nearly put Machine Head in the early in there. 2000s. They, oh, they had a bro. they had a new metal thing going on for a while. Look, me and Rafa aren't going to give our four until the probably the very end. Uh huh. But I do but, agree with you. Machine, Machine Head, Head are on the list. Deserve a lot more credit for what they did in the new They're, metal scene. You're yeah. not the f- you're not the first person to bring you're that. You're not name the up. first person to bring that System up. System of a yeah. Down, I System think. System of a Down. Oh, of a down need yeah. to be in there. Yeah. Um, I'd I'd even say if Death just, Tones, even though they've moved away from what that was at the time, they were like, you know, mm. yeah, I agree. Look, you know, Death Tones. If you're looking really at just what we oh, Death Tones have got to be in there at the time. Yeah. Oh, that's but, um, tricky, isn't it? There's too it's many so now. Tricky. Yes, if you, I'm going to go if you, corn, if you, corn, Limp Bizkit, Death Tones, Machine, and then and then you know, okay, like, okay, okay, that's good. Were, yes, Slipknot yeah, got a, arguably got were in that era too. Like they were. Slipknot would count, sure. Yeah. So you, know what's one, you know what's one that I think is crazy that that's no one has brought up, not one person has said, and they Mud were thing. the and they no kill switch. That yeah, metal call, they were, they were, they were after. There was no bro. There was after. no. So, they were after. No <laughs> such thing. They were not, after. Not when Jesse joined the band. Not that first, first, mm. first album. Not that first album. Yeah, I still don't right. think the first album was good. Right. I think they were too too early. For so big four of new metal. All right. Yeah. All right. So so for Jeffro, we've got Corn, Limp Biscuit, Deftones, and Machine Head. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What's for, uh for for, for Cherv? Yeah, I'll have to say oh, 
I mean, part of me doesn't want to say Limp Bizkit, <coughs> but <laughs> I mean, they were massive at the time, and I was crazy into them. I had a selection of Limp Bizkit t-shirts. Hey, there's, there's <laughs> and red hey, hats. Got issues. I had them all. Mm. <laughs> but I'd say Corn Limp Bizkit, System of a Down. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know. Like Glass Jaw were massive for me. Ooh, yeah, not, Glass not everyone for me, man. But that's that era. Like they yeah, were. It is. That's that. Everyone, Ross Robinson. Everyone wanted Ross Robinson. Oh, dude, wasn't Ross time. Robinson yeah. something special, man? Yeah, everything he did, like that Amen album. Holy <laughs> shit! You know, <laughs> even Mudvayne. Mudvayne oh, were up there too. Mudvayne, yeah. 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 Cold yeah. Chamber Mudvayne, were up there. Cold Chamber. Flame of God. Lamb of God were a bit later. Oh, they were, yes. yeah. yeah. I, mean, I think, yeah, yeah Lamb of God was more later. that that new wave of American heavy metal p- period that kind of came up, came a bit later, really. They were like the wanna, precursor after, like Pantera. their first. I mean, their first album yeah. was definitely like during that time frame, especially. But if you consider that when they were still called Burn the Priest, yeah, um, for sure. But uh, okay, so we'll, yeah, we need we need to try and lock it lock you in there. So who's your who's your fourth your fourth who's one? Your fourth? Uh, what are my first three? So you said corn, <laughs> limp biscuit, system of a down. Deftones. Deftones. All right. Yeah, we'll go with Deftones. Cool. Well, if the question is what were the the big ones, corn is numero uno. Yeah, it has down. to be. Slipknot would have to follow second, I believe, just because of how big they were. System of a down. System of a Down would have to just be one of my favorites, so I'm just going to name them anyway, whether they fit there or not. Mm-hmm. And Machine Head, I would have to say, although they weren't, they probably wouldn't come to the forefront of everybody's choice. It was they the were, Burning Red album. It was they, that, yeah. that one when or two dropped, album when they period. That, where, they yeah. were back in the game. Oh, look, so they, yeah. the, the, they, there's a film clip. I can't remember which song it is, but I've heard the song for years and years and years, and then I finally saw the film clip a couple of months ago. And it was like the Liberty Spikes and the pleather, the shiny, the, the shiny pleather pants and the red, Dirty yeah, the, pants, the puffer so jacket, just the yeah. everything. And you're like, oh, okay, I yes, right now I see why that was that. Um, yeah, that was yeah. like the 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 sort of later period of new metal where it really started to become almost beyond like parody of itself without realizing in terms of the visual yeah. elements especially Absolutely. it was like totally. yeah but um, yeah. and it was i i don't know if it comes down to like um management why some bands do a little bit better than others mm. like if i can think back to what ones influenced the the way in which people dressed and and lincoln park would have been there Although I wasn't a huge Linkin Park listener, I know that they were like the crossover band for a lot of yeah, stuff. I just they were the gateway. That's, the gateway. That's when you knew that like, oh, new metal is like top forty radio shit now. Yeah, I just yeah. remember them being uh, no a huge it. influence and um, people's mums liked that Linkin Park song. You know, yeah. if someone's yeah. mum likes that and song. Then you again, know. I didn't listen to them, but I know how popular Disturbed was, and and mm-hmm. there was. A whole bunch of bands that I don't know. What, one but band if I that think I hate it, Drowning Pool. Yeah, oh. he, he like, didn't have a great. They end. they had they had. Yeah, they 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 were, they an were unfortunate right in the end, thick of it. He? They did, and if, I'm sorry if if that didn't happen. I think they would be in the conversation. Yeah, they yeah. probably would. Yeah, it's it's yeah it's it's a rough a really rough go for those guys. Yeah. Um, even someone, some a band like, like Snot, that sort of, oh, that, yeah. that again, like you have yeah, to imagine, snot. you know, if they hadn't had, a, a, they hadn't lost their singer, like where would they have gone? Because you look yeah. at, you go back and listen to that album, and you can hear so many other bands that came after. Yeah, you can as hear in as, that. As soon as you mentioned Snot, I was like, man, I used to listen to so much Seven Dust. Yeah, oh, like Seven oh, Dust really dude, are important you used to? of that too. You used to well, Seven yeah, Dust? no, we they were on in the van when we were yeah. on tour. Yeah, dude, but, like, oh, but Seven Dust have got to be. Oh, it sucks. They got to be. Yeah. Really and you know what the thing is, Seven Dust. I'll tell you what. I, I, can I, can I, I swap Seven Dust with Deftones? You absolutely yeah, can. You absolutely can. Absolutely, because because those are the two that I fight with. Those are more because. 
where man, the two, look, as far as I'm concerned, me. in the new metal scene, yeah, Chino and Lejean, yeah, dude, you can you cannot get, and they've done songs together, and what yeah. that oh oh the the beautiful thing for me though is like something that a lot of people, especially a lot of non musicians, miss about Seven Dust is the level of their songwriting. Yeah, man, is Absolutely. Just, it's it's like, you know, it's not like Books. that. They, you know, they make great music that the lay person can enjoy, but if you have an understanding of music and songwriting, like their shit is just on another level. Yeah. And the fact that so much of their material, like, I mean, they've done, you know, they've I think they've, they've done the studio album as well, and obviously they did that acoustic tour, the Southside Double Wide tour, where yeah. it was all like acoustic versions of all, like all their shit. Like to take metal music and break it down like that, it has to be great songwriting at its core. That acoustic yeah. EP and, is so great too. Like, and that's yeah, yeah and that's it. That is a per, they're a perfect example of how you just write great fucking songs, like catchy yeah. hooks, Amen. catchy riffs. They stick in your fucking mind. They're there, um, and it it really is a shame that they didn't sort of get to a higher level than what they did. Because mm. they, they stick right in the it. realm of like they deserve music to it, musicians, yeah. but yeah. the punters still get it. So it's like yeah. really caught in that awkward in-between. Yeah. yeah, like they really should have should have, should have ended up uh, doing, you know, at a much higher tier in the industry than they, than yeah. they landed mm. at, you know. Um, Here's how I gauge it. If, my, if my wife likes it, yeah, it's like especially metal, That's it's a probably a lot better than what it should be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to hear the top ten. Please, when you like, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah that really for sure. We'll, what, we'll, what we'll what we'll probably do, we're, what we're thinking at the moment is, when it comes to our end of year live stream, we'll do the sort of unveiling or the thing there, and then we'll clip that and put it out as like its uh, its own little bit for people as well. Yeah, yeah, awesome. So, we might give out. We might if, if it's if it's teetering. Soul fly, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, there's another one. So like, many. If, if it's if it's teetering, we might give our last four on a video. If it's if it's like really we'll see close, how we go. I will say there is there is it's a clear some, distinction. It's, there it's is a like, very it's clear a, the, like, the, the the graph is like that. You know what I mean? Like it's like the first the first couple of them are really really high, and it drops off very very quickly, and then there's yeah. a long then there's a long tail. So I think, but see, I we'll tell count, every metalhead to try this little social experiment. Mine always goes off this: if you go up to anyone, any metalhead, and you ask them who who is your big four of thrash, you'll get three and one are different. Yeah. So you'll get three out of that four every single time. One will over- yeah. always be different. Look, Metallica, Megadeth are always, they're always yeah. there. But it's the last two that always get a bit wishy-washy. Yeah. But, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely but, have like a, a top ten sort of countdown, yeah. I think, and then, then the top four will be – the top four because we're going to we, put um, it to a poll. We'll put it to a poll. Yeah. Oh, mate, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see how many we get because, like, <laughs> if we get um, if we've got a lot of answers from people, because we're going to be asking out at metal to the max. We're going to be asking tons of people as well, mm. um, yeah. you know, to try and get some answers there. So we'll be tallying all those results. We've got plenty more guests between now and the end of the year to ask as well. So we'll have, I think, at least a somewhat representative sample. Mm. Um, if I can, if yeah. I use, if I use my very feeble brain, I, I look Corn and Limbisk are definitely up there. Might even I turn think, to Reddit. Might I even think, go to I Reddit think, and, yeah, and ask. Uh, yeah, you know, really throw it out there. I really think system might there. be in a really system might be the very close third with sort of Deftones running alongside it. Yeah, they were always the standout for me. I think it's. Um... The, the theatricalness, and I always find that b- bands and uh, Nine Inch Nails do it for me a bit as well. And uh, but the ones that where piano lead people who are uh, piano led, they just write differently. Mm. Like mm. It, 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 it sort of filters through, and it always there's always a bit of circus involved with piano, like. Yeah, like yeah. like there's always a bit of theatrical stuff that filters through, um, you know, Faith No More. Anything that gets a little Ooh. bit like that, and and Trent Reznor does it a bit too. They just come at things a little bit different from uh, guitar-driven music to piano 
mel- mm. like maybe the the ideas are coming up on a piano first. Mm. It always just ends up a little bit well, circus. The, the way the way the chord progressions are, are built, you know, yeah, they are they approached on a piano versus a guitar is can be is very different mentalities different. and. I don't yeah. know if any of you guys muck around with Polyphia. I think Cherv might. Cherv, you muck around yeah. with you, yeah, 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 for sure. The, yeah, I that, with that Tim stuff. Henson, he he I'm pretty sure he writes most of his stuff on piano first and then tries yeah. to break it down on, on his guitar afterwards. Yeah, yeah. He said which, he's which, like, which, which he goes is actually a, de- a, a detriment to him because the chords may be really easy on the piano, but when he tries to break <laughs> it down on the guitar, it's like the lead the distance yeah. between here and here is just like is just stupid. Yeah, yeah, but it's it goes in that same thing of like, uh, you know, hip hop sampling with beats has made people who are playing real drums play differently now. They try to play that broken, yeah, sampled sort of. It's a style now that you play. Yeah, and I think that you know that applies there as well. You know, it's, it's just it's just, mm, er, er, everything <laughs> influencing everything. You know. Definitely, mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah. Well, look, thank you guys so much for, for coming along tonight and sharing some of these tales from the the European tour with us. Congratulations. Um, can't wait yeah. to – congratulations, yes, absolutely. Cannot wait to see all y'all – see you guys in person again at some point, hopefully hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, and, look, if you've been watching and you've been hearing all these stories and you want to see the photos and the videos and all the other cool shit from the tours, we're going to have links to their social medias in the description so you'll be able to go and see all of that stuff for sure. Can I just can I just say if you are yeah. a, lo- a local band who um, has that idea to do something uh, anywhere over in Europe, the UK, please reach out to us, Sinsoto or Piss and Fizz. Any of us, yeah. Any yeah. of us. Uh, we will, honest to God, save you concerns. some time and a bit of money uh, with regards to just logistical things, a- accommodation, recommendations, uh, probably a couple of connections for venues. Um, the whole point of this really is not to keep what we've learnt close at hand, but rather share it um, to encourage other local groups out there. So if you are considering it, want to know how much it costs, wondering what not to do, where your people yeah. mm. Yes. <laughs> anything. Anything yes. at all. Guys. Anything. anything. Yeah. Let us know. yeah. And don't yeah. clip that bit. <laughs> absolutely. It absolutely. It, it ain't easy to decide to do it and then actually execute it there's a lot involved and uh the more you can get some helpful tips um you know just makes it you'll have a little bit better time and have a little bit more money at the end so um yeah mm, awesome I guess it's kind of like having and kids this is, who decide to do it and then the thing comes out and it's like it's not easy uh, and this is <laughs> and this is why this is why we love you guys because you're about you're Honestly. not about gatekeeping that information you want to get that out there and help people so you know, amazing people. Thank we'll, you so, we'll so much. We'll tell you all our fuck-ups quite honestly, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Thank no you. Problem. Thank you so much. And when, and look, and I, and when I see, when we see you guys in person, we'll have all, I'm sure there'll be plenty of chatting about the stuff that we can't talk about on the podcast from Absolutely. it. Absolutely. For sure, for sure. Yes. Yes. Thank you very, very much for taking the time to hang out with us. Thank you for watching. Very, very much appreciated. If you liked today's video, give it a like. If you didn't, downvote the shit out of it. I have been Raph. He has been the beer buddy, Kyle. We have had Sin Soto and Piston Fist on here for you guys. Thank you so much. Much love, legend. We'll catch you guys next Lovely time. Legend. Peace Thank out. You. Peace. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching today's video. We really hope you had a good time with us. If you did, uh, consider hitting the uh, like and subscribe buttons down there and let, ring that bell so you get notified of all the videos we've got coming out. And we do also have a Patreon. Uh, if you're interested, you can head on over there. You can get all the videos early and ad-free. You know, a little bit of a benefit. It's only a couple of bucks a month. Uh, but if not... Thank you very much for watching anyway, and we'll catch you guys next time.